Hello and welcome back to Shane's DIY. Today I'm going to do the first episode in what I think is going to be a three-part series on uh, using your Radio Master TX16S with your Spectrum AR631, AR637 receivers. Uh, specifically, uh, this is on the bind and fly versions, which come from the factory uh, locked. You can you have limited access to modify settings on the forward programming. Go through a way to unlock those uh, features. Get into the forward programming with the Radio Master. There's been some uh, nice updates recently with uh, uh, forward programming. For a long time, the version 0.2 has come with the multi-protocol module uh, package and it had very limited functionality with forward programming uh, and I've been working uh, talking to one of the developers that has been working on it and they got it up to what's current as of time of this video version 0 0.53 which has got significantly more functionality so we're gonna get into that so episode one here I'm basically just gonna help you make sure you've got the right software on your radio master uh, TX 16s this may be compatible with some of the other radio master products or anything that's edge TX I know there's some limitations on open TX I don't know if this is gonna work out of the box the same for open TX so this is mostly referring to edge TX and you'll have to, to figure out those limitations for yourself uh, number one here I'm currently on version 2.8.0 of edge TX I know this is the same for 2.7.1. Uh, prior to that, I don't know. I haven't used anything prior to 2.7.1. That was what I started with, and I recently updated to 2.8.0. Uh, this is also assuming you've already got the multi-protocol module version 1.3.2.0 on your uh, radio. Let me switch desktops here. Um, the uh, You can check and see what version of uh, multi-protocol module you have if you go into your model and uh, let me show you that real quick on the simulator welcome to edge tx switch warning throttle cut if you go to your model and then you scroll down again this is 2.8.0 you go into your internal rf and this one doesn't show this is on the simulator but right here it will show you what version your multi-protocol module firmware is updated to. And the current one as of this video is 1.3.3.20. This is a snapshot of my transmitter. So you can see here it says uh, 133.2.0. That package only comes with the forward programming currently. As of last time I checked, it only had version 0 0.2 of the forward programming uh, scripts on it which uh, had some functionality, but you're very limited. It didn't have all the ability to programming from, from Z square one, you know, from a fresh new um, receiver. If you did a factory reset, you wouldn't be able to get in there and, and really dial it in. Um, so when I did my first one, I had to use uh, an, a Spectrum NX6 transmitter that my son has to do the forward programming parts of it. Cause I've done this procedure uh, with one of my Aero Scouts. I've got another Aero Scout that we're gonna be using for this process. Uh, so to get moving on, this could get kind of long. So I'm gonna try to keep it uh, short and sweet. Let me close the simulator out here. First thing we need to do is get the, the, uh, the new version 0 0.53 forward programming Lua scripts downloaded. I'll have links to this below in the description, but the, uh, <clears throat> First link uh, takes you to this uh, RC Groups forum page. Uh, he's got all the pack, all the files zipped into this DSM FP053 January 15th, uh, and that's 2023. You download that zip file, and then uh, all the files you need are in there. <clears throat> I'll have another, um, and I'll show you where those go in a minute. Uh, another link it takes you. Uh, he's got these links in here, but uh, here's a link to the uh, readme file that takes you to this. And uh, there's a lot of good information here, <clears throat> but uh, you know there's a lot to read. So I'm just going to kind of summarize it all for you and let you uh, expedite the process. Uh, other than the files you're going to download in that zip file, all you've got to do is create a folder in your models folder called DSM data. And I'll show you that as well. Um, and then, of course, you can read through this. There's a lot of good information in here, and you should uh, 
familiarize yourself as much as possible before you get in there. Um, as for downloading the files, this is a much easier way to do it. It gives you everything you need in one zip file. When I first did it, I didn't have that. If you go to the GitHub, it's a little trickier to find the files. You can go right, like for example, here's uh, the, uh, the Lua scripts. The scripts you need, you need this folder, the DSM lib fi uh, folder. It's got some fi files in it. And then uh, you need one or both of these. This is a black and white version. This color one is actually, you takes advantage of the touch screen options. Uh, that's the one I prefer, and it's in color, and it's the right format for our TX16S screens. Um, but you can't just download these right from these links here. Even if you right-click on them and you say Save Link As, it doesn't actually give you the correct file. It gives you an HTTP file for it, so it took me a while to figure that one out. Um, one thing you can do, if you go to this link here, and this is just kind of GitHub knowledge if you needed to get, if you go to the root folder of a particular... This is the folder that has those Lua scripts in it. Once you're on the root folder of a project, you can go over here to code, click on code, and then you can download a zip file of the entire contents. If you did that, you'd get a zip that had all this stuff, you know, as well as the things you actually needed, and all this. So you can see there's a bunch of stuff. When I first did it, I didn't know how to do that, so I went and I had to open these up one at a time and save them. So it took me forever. Um, but we can avoid all of that with uh, the uh, zip file that uh, they've already provided for us. So let me open up my... Uh... So <clears throat> first of all, here's, uh, here's the zip file that we downloaded. If you click on that link. So if you right click on that, you can click Extract All. And it'll make a folder. You can give it a different name if you want. You can put this wherever you want. I just happen to put it on one of my drives. Uh, extract that. Now if I go into that folder that we just extracted, you can see it's got the exact files that we need already taken care of, and then here's all the other stuff. So, now, over here, what I've got is a copy of all contents of the SD card of my Radio Master TX-16. Um, this is exactly what you would find if you plug it in to your radio. Um, as usual, if you're going to make any changes, you're going to want to back up your SD card contents first so you don't accidentally mess something up or lose something. Uh, there's little risk in this as long as you follow the proper procedures to get this stuff transferred over. So the first thing we're going to do um, is open up this folder. You need these contents in your scripts folder here. Now we're going to go to Tools. And what you can see currently, I just have the original to forward programming script files in here. These are the version 0 0.2 that comes with the multi-protocol module version 1.3.3.20. So I need to get this over here. I'm just gonna copy all this stuff and I'm just gonna drag it over here to this folder. Go ahead and refresh that. So now you can see I've got that folder and then I've got my other two. You can delete these if you want. You can leave them, it's totally up to you. It doesn't affect the functionality of the new ones. This is the version 0.53. Uh, uh, and then you can see we've also got the, all the other folders or files that you need. Uh, these readme files, they don't, they are a text file, but they won't immediately open if you double click on it. It wants to know if you want to use a notepad and uh, it will open it up and you can see what's in there with that, but uh, it is just a text file, so you can kind of a help file. And then all these images. What these are for is when you're doing the forward programming, you have to do a model setup, and these images all basically give you a graphical reference to how your wing is set up, your tail, that sort of thing. And then the one other thing you've got to do in, uh, you go into your models, and you've got to create a folder. So this DSM data, you need to make a folder for that because that's where it's going to contain the model information for each one of your models. There, DSM data. So just right here, we're going to right click, create a new folder, DSM data, and enter. That's all you got to do for that. Uh, it will automatically populate the contents of that folder as you go into model setups and create them. 
<clears throat> uh, and that's all you got to do to get the files that you need on to your radio. Now, when you go into your radio, this is a simulation. This is easier to show on the computer, but uh, uh, once you get your radio set up. Welcome to HTX Throttle Cut. Go into window mode here. So once you're in your radio, I won't be able to do all of it from here, but uh, uh, you pick the model. You want to be bound to the model that you need to, to view. And then uh, you're going to go into your system folder. And then you should now have these other links. Now, if you've got, if you don't have 2.8.0, it's going to look differently. Uh, these aren't going to be big buttons like this. But uh, here's the old version of uh, version 0.2. <clears throat> And then here's the color and touch version. Here's the black and white version. Um, you can get a little bit through these. If I click on that one, I'll give you some basic information here uh, on that. On the touch screen version, you just touch anywhere on the screen. Or you can click your wheel, and it'll proceed through. This is the main screen. So this is the first place you'll go. We'll get into this in a future episode. But this is where you're going to set up your model. <clears throat> you select your wing type, tail type, pick your gyro channels and stuff like that. Um, this is touchscreen sensitive. You can just touch the screen or you can also roll the wheel. And then uh, it won't work right now because I'm not connected to a model. This is a simulator. But uh, you, once you've set up your model, then you go into forward programming and it'll retrieve those menus from your receiver. And then it'll also give you up here a, 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 the firmware. It'll say what, what uh, receiver you're hooked up to and it'll give you the the uh, firmware version that's on your receiver currently. <clears throat> I'll get into a lot more detail on that once we get to that point. Uh, but uh, I've got three different uh, firmware versions of the AR631 on my different planes. And the uh, currently, I can only really get into the one that's unlocked. That'll be a future episode, is unlocking the receiver, updating the firmware. Uh, but you, you have limited or no access uh, via forward programming on this, at least, to the or the locked versions. These are bind and fly models, all of them, and you can't really change much. Um, but uh, we're going to go through and show you how to unlock those. But that's how you get in to uh, get your forward programming installed and set up and uh, be able to uh, start programming your uh, Spectrum receivers. Uh, any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. I'm happy to help. I kind of go out of my way to try to make sure I'm helping people. I know all the research that I've done to try to figure stuff out. I know I want to be helpful to others. Uh, one uh, key thing that I've ran into with uh, one of my commenters, uh, one of the videos, he uh, could not get communicating with the forward programming, and he had it linked. It turns out what we found was he had his, um, it was an AR637T, was not a bind and fly. He could bind to it, but he could not get it to communicate with telemetry, and he could not get it to uh, go to forward programming. And he sent me his files, and I put them on my radio and did some inspection, and it turns out he had this set for DSM-2. And even though the receivers are compatible with DSM-2 and DSM-X. Only DSM-X, I believe, is compatible. So once we switched it to DSM-X, uh, he was able to get to the forward programming to communicate and as well as the telemetry to start functioning. So make sure that you're, even though you're you're bind and you can actually fly your planes around just fine with DSM-2 because the, the newer receivers are backwards compatible, you won't be able to get all that current technology of the telemetry and the forward programming. So make sure you're using DSM-X. Best thing to do when you're trying to create a new model, if you're not sure what it is, um, put it on auto and then it'll automatically bind and it'll set itself to what it thinks it needs. It'll be, you know, probably DSM-X 1F or 2F is what it's going to use. Um, again, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for future episodes to help you get through and uh, navigate the spectrum to TX-16S communication issues to make sure you can do what you need to do so far i think i'm only going to have to use one spectrum product to get this to work i think i'm gonna have to use their usb adapter 
to get the firmware updated before it'll let me unlock these uh, bind and fly receivers. That's what I had to do the first time. But I'm pretty sure with the model setup and the new forward programming, we'll be able to do all the rest of the uh, setup for a new model and uh, programming from scratch, all with the uh, Radio Master TX16S. Thanks to the, the developers that have been putting together this uh, forward programming. It's been super helpful. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found this uh, helpful. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Take care.